Why don't you give me a sign? Like the sea that leaves a trail along that shore It's not your problem, it's mine Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin Oh, won't you let me hold you for one time Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe Hey you guys, it's your girl Shayna and you are watching the Fan Carpet Arena. Make sure that you tune in. Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica and welcome to the Fan Carpet. First off, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, um, thank, thank you. And thank you for joining me on Thanksgiving because I know that you're of course. probably wanting to spend time with your family. Um, it's fine. <laughs> We're here, we made it. So thank right. you for joining me. Um, so right. if we go back to the beginning, was there a defining moment for you to get into the entertainment industry? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so I performed at a talent show when I was in elementary school. I used to be very, very shy. A lot of people are shocked when I say that because I'm like an open book now. Um, but I performed with one of my friends. Our outfits were terrible. I remember I have still pictures. Um, and everybody was just looking like, what the heck? Like they could sing. And so I think I just like that, like reinforcement, like, oh, okay, you could do this. And then if, I always tell people it's a hobby I never outgrew. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're going to spend your life doing something, you may as well do something you love, isn't it? So. Yeah, I love it for sure. I agree. <laughs> same, same, same with me in the fan carpet. I mean, I've spent 18 years of my life doing it. I'm not starting, wow. I'm not, I'm not doing anything now, anything else now. I'm like, right. This, this is it. Um, You're like, this is my thing, right? <laughs> this is my thing. This is what people know me for. So, yeah. So, what can you tell me about Dear December Slow Down, the inspiration behind them? What made you want to um, have a Christmas EP at this point in your career? Yeah, for sure. So for me, I always love the holidays, but it brings back a lot of memories of my childhood. I was actually going through pictures yesterday um, with my family and just looking at all these Christmas photos. And I just wanted to kind of have that nostalgia of writing a project about like the holidays with my family, just how you look back at these pictures and you're like, oh my gosh, I remember this like it was yesterday. You know, that's the great thing about photos. You get to relive the moment. And so Dear December, slow down. It's like the time, just slow down, appreciate the holidays with your loved ones, especially because, you know, you never know if this is the last time you're going to get to see them or when you're going to see them again. So I think it's just very important. Absolutely. Especially, especially the fact that we've just come off of a, a two year pandemic where we, where we, where it was literally illegal to be in the same room as somebody else seriously yeah <laughs> exactly so it's like my first holiday i get to spend with everybody so yeah. thank god you know absolutely so uh do you have any memories while while making uh Decem dear december so down that you'll take with you for the rest of your career yeah for me it was just this was i think the first project that I was really producing on it. I mean, I've always been the, like the ear in the produce, like, oh, can you put this little, you know, they're just looking at me like, what are you saying? But I really took the time out to like play these chords and find the instruments. And it, it just, it's like my little work that I made myself too. I mean, all the other projects, yes, I'm always a lyricist, but I was able to put my on my production hat. So I could take that with me and build those skills for my later projects. Awesome. So that must come with its own challenges in itself. So can you talk about some of those? Yeah, for sure. I mean, for me, I had to relearn all my music skills. I mean, I could play piano, guitar, but I'm not like a wizard on it. So I had to sit down and just like, okay, you know, this is where my, my practice during the pandemic comes in. I'm able to kind of show off a little bit, you know, and then I worked alongside Malcolm, who's a phenomenal producer and he taught me a lot. So I felt like a student, 
but it was exciting because we just had so much fun. It felt very authentic creating. It wasn't stressful. It was like a really passion project for this little Christmas EP. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, like uh, during, like during this time of year um, on my TV, well, on my laptop, I don't own a TV, but on my laptop, I always uh -huh. have the Christmas films running in the background. Oh, yeah. so Hallmark, <laughs> Hallmark is always something that's running because I love those. And like right. Netflix has got into it as well. And I love right. those too. So, yeah. Um, um, so, um, and, and obviously your music has been featured in a lot of projects. I mean, the list is, but I'll just name a few. You've been on Love, <laughs> Love is Blind, Selling Sunset, uh, The Bad Girls Club, but Netflix is uh, Miss Stevens and uh, the Disney original Stargirl, which I really enjoyed. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so are there any other aspects of the entertainment industry that you'd like to pursue? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, I love touring. That is like my thing. I just, when I toured in Japan and when I came to the UK, when I performed in London, it just felt so cool just to be able to experience other countries and cities, you know, while doing what I love. So I just, it's like a rush that I get, almost like an athlete, you know, going on the field. It's like, ah, this is awesome. So for me, I just really want to go on tour, like a real tour overseas for a while and just, you know, do my thing. That's okay. what I want to pursue yeah. going back into the touring field. Yeah. But I love um, having my music in a TV and film. It's just, it hits another audience and it's always like exciting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is, uh, it is, yeah it's got to be awesome for you to like something you've worked so so long and hard on to finally see it in a different medium or like to see it where you intended it to go yeah for sure yeah and I recently actually the past year I started acting I guess that's another thing um mm -hmm. on the tv shows that play my music so I'm just like oh man I, it'd be like so cool to be the character singing my song in the show that's the goal <laughs> Well, Delta Goodrum did that uh, when she was on Neighbours. There Nina. we go. So right, and that's coming back. Oh, I'm really right. happy about that because that's actually coming mm -hmm. back next year. They they cancelled it. Uh, they cancelled it on Channel Five and Australian uh -huh. TV. Um, but it's uh -huh. actually coming back like late next year, which I'm so excited about. Oh Not yeah, good. It's going to come back in like um like whether it's still going to be the same format as it was last time. Uh, for mm -hmm. the last 37 years no idea but i'm just glad it's back and it'll be they'll be bringing back some of the characters that oh that's gonna be so good so that's gonna be awesome uh, <laughs> yeah, i could start watching that again um because uh no seriously i i've been missing it like for the last couple of months because but like, you I'm... get attached to your favorite characters and it just stops like that's like me with like the new game of thrones i'm like i was just really liking this what happened yeah <laughs> two well, years yeah, and it's coming back. Well, it's coming back from season two, so that's good. But I mm -hmm. do, but I enjoyed that show as well. Oh yeah, um, for sure. Um, I really, I really disliked in the media how they were saying that like Millie Alcott has been replaced by, was it Emma Darcy? I think. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, but we knew that we knew that going in. Like she weren't gonna like we Millie knew. wasn't gonna be that we knew like Millie wasn't because because of the amount of time jumps that we knew that going in and then it, it like in the news and it like headlines and it's like well, I know I I know it's like but you guys knew this right like they had the character list we saw them <laughs> yeah we knew this so what does it mean for you to be a storyteller and tell storytell stories in this way oh my goodness I just. First off, I used to write poetry as a kid. I didn't even know this. I re I actually am in my childhood home right now, and I was looking through memories. I was like, what are all these poems? I was always a writer. So bizarre. Um, but for me, I just love people watching. I love even watching movies and being able to, like, really tell, like, write a song about what I wrote, like a little synopsis of it. It's just always been my thing. I love to read. I love just telling my own interpretation of things and that's how I feel my lyrics are like I just love and I always appreciate um songwriters like Phineas and Sia and all of them it's just I I see more in depth of just what the average listener will listen to oh the beat this I'm like oh that's so clever wordplay so it's exciting to me you know I'm sure you could um you know for you as a journalist and as a host for sure 
yeah absolutely um even even in um uh like my be my best friend is a musician so uh, okay like even um yeah so i've been um he runs he he's the lead in a band called uh spider Adam. Nice. he's got another band Ooh. as well called uh Br called breacher uh which is oh, slightly different it. um but yeah mm -hmm. they're the, um they've been around for a long time on the uh mm -hmm. in the independent scene um in nice. in, in, in the uk and um uh they're actually doing a um uh with breacher they're they're going for i think it's called bloodstock uh, that they're okay. trying that they're trying to get into it's like some sort of festival that they're um you know they're, they're doing that so yeah it's like i'm always there to support and i've always been heck yeah you know, even though uh when i was younger when i was running around with them um i did have like the romantic notion of being a drummer but that didn't happen i was gonna um, say were you <laughs> in the band no. i feel like you were no but they have but tom's always said to me that i am the unofficial fifth member of the band so see there um, we go <laughs> i feel like the fans would agree <laughs> well uh, when i sat on the when i sat on the drum kit uh, like like not like i finished doing like my filming i was filming for them and i sat on the drum kit because it kept moving the drum kept moving so i sat mm -hmm. on that for the rest of the gig for them so because otherwise <laughs> yeah otherwise like otherwise rob wouldn't have been able to carry on playing so because it gets moving that's amazing i, I love it. that i just sat on it to keep it in, keep it in place <laughs> it's fun it's really funny but that's what you do and that's what you do right when you're helping you when, when you're there to support your mates what's what you do so yeah, yeah and we love that like our man it's everything to us seriously i'm sure they appreciate it <laughs> Yeah, they did. And I've I've done ro I've been a roadie for them. Um, wow. Uh, I've done all sorts of stuff for them, and yeah. Um, so you've had uh, all aspects of the industry. Well, yeah, I set up a record label for them. Uh, so, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not great. not this company, another a, a different company, but yeah. Uh -huh. Um. But yeah, that was primarily to help them. So yeah. Obviously, you're acting as well. Um. So, what is your preferred genre? And do you have any favorite films? Yeah, for me, I believe that's a good question. I mean, my preferred genre, I actually like horror films. It's not my preferred, but it's just like recently, I, I've always used to stay away from horror films. And now I, I like a good one. Like, it's really hard if I want a Rotten Tomatoes that has high rating. <laughs> but I'm always searching. I like to watch a lot of Korean films. I feel like they take it to like Alice in Borderland. I don't know if you ever watched that, but it's like up there with Squid Games. I feel like that's like my my genre right now, like Korean films. I'm just like, wow. And I now I watch it with the subtitles because I have very bad vision, so I'm always like squinting. But now I'm just like, all right, I can read it fast. I got this. <laughs> yeah, but they they know how to do it. I mean the um, oh, that is great. Like, uh, um, I mean one of the one of the films that was still one of the horror films is it's not Korean. Um, is uh, I think it's Japanese, or it could be Chinese. I think it's Japanese. Oh yeah, uh, I think Borderland is Japanese too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think it's Japanese. Uh, the The Grudge. Oh now, yeah, uh -huh. that is creepy. Whether it's the American version or the or the original Japanese version, that's creepy. So, I never watched the Japanese version. Now I gotta look at it. Yeah, um, it's creepy. Don't watch it at night if you are gonna watch it. Okay. It's my new thing. It's, I wasn't always into this. Creepy. I mean, I like I like rom coms. Like I just watched from scratch, which I don't know if you watched it on Netflix yet, but I was prepared. Everybody said, You're gonna cry at the end. I was like, No, I'm not, because I know that there's something sad. Oh my god, ball <laughs> I was like, This is so sad. But the act I just appreciate great actors, you know. Yeah. Well what wasn't that yeah. that was the kind of the same thing that happened with uh, This Is Us. I mean I know that's finished now, but um mm. like it was every up every other episode was a tearjerker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Seriously. I, and I mean Mandy is just incredible. I mean Mandy Moore is an is in, is an incredible inspiration cuz uh, like she does everything. She's a musician, lyricist, actress. She's great at all of it. Oh, that's how, yeah. I feel like that about her. I feel like that about Zendaya. Like they're just able to do a lot because moving to New York, I'm from a, Virginia in a small town. When I moved to New York, I was told to kind of just hold on to one thing only. So even me as a songwriter, they said, we don't want you writing for other people. Just focus on your career. 
And then I just got bored. I mean, I love music, but I just saw so, people doing so many different things. I'm like, why do I have to just do one when I love everything, mm. you know? And it all goes together, acting, singing, dancing, like it's a hub, you know, yeah. especially now in days. Absolutely. Because I mean, like even, even with music videos, you're going to be acting in, in if you're, exactly. you're going to be acting. So absolutely. Like, Gonna be acting out what you've written, or yeah, those are the best. Those are the best music videos, as far as I'm concerned. Those are always yeah. my favorite things to do. Music videos. People are like, "Why do you take so much time?" I'm like, because I just love it. And then I realize, oh, it's because I miss acting. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> that's cool. And and you just and you have to tell a story in no matter what the how long it is. You're telling a story in like three minutes. And that comes, to, comes through whether you're writing it or whether you're acting it. So right. if you're doing exactly. both, you know, yeah, it's great. Exactly. You never know. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to the future. And what, what does the future hold for Dear December Slow Down? Yeah. So for Dear December Slow Down, I'm going to be, um, I have a lot of shows coming up which I'm excited about, a lot of Christmas markets and all of that. Um, I am also have a music video that's going to be releasing um, for Miss Grinch. It's very silly. I'm excited because it's showing my stupid personality. Um, I sent it to Rebecca, a publicist, and she was cracking up, like, what the heck? Because people, I feel like, you know, they see you on social media, and you're posting your photos, your music, but unless they get to know you, like, they don't know how, how you are. You could be very serious, very goofy. So when people get to know me, they're like, oh, you're, you're quirky. <laughs> you're really like just silly. And yeah, so I can't wait for that. Awesome. Yeah. And we can't wait for the exclusive you got for the fan carpet arena. That's going to be awesome too. Of course. <laughs> can't wait for that. Um, yeah. yeah. Can't wait for that. What are you hoping audiences and fans will take away from Dear, De Dear December Slowdown when they hear the EP? <laughs> Yeah, for me, I just want them to have this feeling of, I mean, holiday music, I know it's not for everyone, but when you put it on, it gets you really in the spirit. I just want that, my songs to carry on. Like, that's the cool thing about Christmas music, right? It's, mm. it's timeless. You play it every holiday season. I want people to listen to it and the lyrics and be like, oh my God, I remember, you know, playing with my friends in the snow as a kid or, oh my God, the Grinch. Like, yeah, I, I love this movie. Just different things. It's the time of the year, you know, just, it just feels good music. And I want it to have that Motown aspect. So I want people to be able to listen to it. It's easy listening and just to get into the spirit, you know? Awesome. The holidays could be a very stressful time too, for sure. I mean, there's different aspects to it, you know, try to get that perfect gift, but I feel like the music and the celebrations always make it great. So. Absolutely. I think I've done pretty well on gifts this year, like buying gifts this year. No idea. Oh, that's good. Get, I think I've done, I think I've done pretty well on the, on the gifts anyway. But, um, <laughs> but speaking of the Grinch, I mean, Taylor Momsen is another one that must be an inspiration for you because like she was a little kid when she was in the Grinch. And yes now and now she's a musician <laughs> yeah for the pretty reckless it's one great. of my favorite bands actually uh they're always wow. on, they're always playing on my um echo so always um, i love that i'm gonna say the the wake word because she'll try she'll pipe up but yeah <laughs> 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 right that's great so just finally where can we find you online to keep up with everything you're doing yeah absolutely you all can follow me um s-h-e-n-n-a music on all platforms, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, um, you know, Spotify, it's just my name, Shana. So yeah, awesome. I'm excited. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. And TikTok's got to be quite quite the um uh, quite the nice platform for you at the moment because of the, the short form videos and having people do the duet. And I was talking to um, Tom Bell uh, the other day. Tom Bell? Um, <laughs> uh, from uh, Britain's Got Talent and he's uh, he's just started up a um uh, a uh, a singing academy um and um, oh wow yeah uh called St called tom bell rising stars i think that's cool but he's always referred that's to as cool. rising stars so um but mm -hmm. yeah he's um um a reason i bring that up is because he was talking about how tiktok and you can just do it with people even if you're not in the same room and that's got to be quite nice for you being that you can see what collaborations you can get like from other people, like people, like fans of yours that watch it. I'll then... tell you 
what like for all the i've been on every single platform like i'm always late to every platform like i was super late to instagram twitter all of that but i get there eventually um that's the most enjoyable platform to me TikTok. i could find anything i could look for i need a drummer in new york for a show drummer in new york city you find them you meet people you don't have to have a ton of followers it doesn't really feel like a competition you know instagram it can make you feel insecure mm -hmm. and you post a photo you're like i thought this was nice <laughs> like and then it's just like nobody sees it um but for this it's just the most organic way to meet people and to find people you like and it's, it's awesome for sure it is. that for sounds TikTok. awesome um i've not jumped on tip i think we've got one for the company um nice. but i didn't start that um <laughs> i didn't start it for the company uh, my colleague ben did um i think okay um but i <laughs> I, I had that sort of that that same situation a few years ago um they uh they were supposed to uh send, take us all up in a in a in a bus uh to do a mm. premiere in in birmingham and um mm. and it fell through and so mm. I needed a I needed a journalist team in Birmingham to go to this premiere. Um, so I reached out on, on Twitter and found one. <laughs> See, the, social media is great. I mean, too much of anything is bad for you, you know. Mm. So I try to like. There's apps you can schedule your posts where it's like, ah, oh, you know, I'm still working, but I'm like able to step away from it. But TikTok is so addictive. <laughs> like all of a sudden you're just looking at recipes you're not even a chef you're just like oh this is awesome <laughs> but that's great that you're able to connect and you know find other journalists and stuff twitter is awesome that's why i'm like scared for the future of twitter <laughs> right oh now. yeah now now i am yeah <laughs> uh, but i i've got a social media manager so she deals with all oh, there you go but yeah she, yeah um, we're mostly focused on instagram at the moment instagram and facebook so maybe that won't maybe we can bypass the whole elon mess uh <laughs> yeah oh yeah and you know youtube shorts is great i just recently started posting on that last week and i was like what this is awesome <laughs> yeah well, i haven't yet but i'm sure we will at some point um, yeah. yeah yeah it's all yeah. it's so much so many things yeah so many things and there's probably new ones coming out like tomorrow so or next yeah, right. week i know um, <laughs> um i i don't know there, there there's an app that i really like um uh i think it, well it's a social media app in in the sense that you can talk to uh creators but there's a there's an app oh. that i like called call in uh which is it which is essentially like a radio station and you can call in to the re to the host and like be a co-host on there i really like oh that that's one. super cool yeah, yeah that's cool i never i need to check it out that's dope yeah it's uh called call in it's c a oh. C A W L I N, call in. Okay. Uh, it's nice. really Yeah, really nice. It's a um a red logo with um, um, uh, with like um like white um, like speaker like a speaker sort of thing. It's like grills, but it's like a red okay. a logo. It's really cool. Um, yeah, I like it. It's really cool. Nice. Now check it out for sure. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, yeah. I look forward to uh, the Fan Cup Arena exclusive that you've got for us. Uh, that's going to be cool. Yeah, of course. No, it was so nice meeting you. Thank you for taking the time out to interview me. And yeah, I'm excited awesome. to share. Awesome. Thank you for watching the Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more content next time. on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca.
Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.